Cocaine Bear Origins How dangerous is a bear on drugs? Cocaine Bear attracted a lot of attention right from the time the trailer was first released. The movie, directed by Elizabeth Banks, promised to be a wild ride, and there was a further curiosity because the story was inspired by a real life event in the 1980s. Cocaine Bear certainly lives up to the expectations, and it will leave you gasping and screaming from the hilarious moments and the R rated gory details. In this video, we will explore the depths of the plot and bring you everything there is to know about the deadly bear on drugs. There will be a few spoilers along the way, so you have been warned. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Exploring the plot and the entire story of the cocaine bear. The movie is premised in the 1980s and the opening sequence shows stakes you to a drug smuggler flying a plane carrying large amounts of cocaine. For unknown reasons, he decides to drop a shipment from the aircraft, but a clumsy mistake on his part throws his plans haywire. After dropping the cocaine shipment, he tries to parachute out of the plane, but a freak accident causes him to knock himself unconscious by hitting his head on the aircraft. He drops to his death and the body is discovered by a local detective named Bob. We get to know that the cocaine belonged to a notorious drug lord, Sid White, and a large part of the shipment is still missing. Meanwhile, out in the wilderness, a female African black bear comes across the cocaine and consumes some of it. It results in heightened aggression and rage, and the bear is now deadlier than ever before. Two hikers can be seen brutally attacked by the vicious bear, and we get the hint. Things are about to get nasty real quick. We are then introduced to a young girl named Dee Dee. She lives with her mother, Sari, and she is upset about her mother's new boyfriend. In her middle school rebellious state of mind, she decides to skip school and heads into the forests with her friend Henry. Dee Dee intends to paint the waterfalls out there, and she is completely unaware of the dangers awaiting her. The duo comes across the cocaine dump, and Henry claims to be a pro just to look cool in front of his crush. Suddenly, the bear attacks them, and they barely manage to escape with their lives. In the meantime, Sari finds out where her daughter is and decides to go looking for her. She is accompanied by the hilarious forest ranger Liz and her crush Peter, who seems to have a keen eye for Sari instead. Elsewhere, the drug lord Sid White is not going to let go of such a large prize. He orders one of his minions named David to go along with his son Eddie to find the cocaine in the forest. From the onset, it becomes clear that Eddie is a misfit in the effort because the poor fellow is grieving the death of his wife. Nevertheless, Sid wants him to be a part of the family business, and Eddie unwillingly tags along. The detective Bob, who found the dead body of the pilot and discovered the cocaine trail, has also ventured into the woods to arrest Sid. Overall, it is just an abundance of prey for the cocaine bear to unleash her fury. Sari, Liz, and Peter find Henry, but the joy of their discovery is short-lived because the cocaine bear attacks them. The ranger is badly injured, but she runs to get some help for the others. Peter, however, is not as lucky, as he falls into some cocaine while trying to escape. The whiff of cocaine triggers the bear into another lethal attack that gets him killed. Sari and Henry get away, and Liz experiences a comedy of errors and misunderstandings as she comes across two young boys who were previously apprehended in the woods by David. The boys become bear fodder pretty soon, and the medics who arrive with help also meet with the same fate as blood and guts galore. Elsewhere, Bob comes across the gang members trying to retrieve the cocaine, and a shootout follows. We also experience a hilarious moment where the cocaine bear passes out briefly on top of Eddie, who frantically pretends to be dead to avoid being attacked. David approaches to take a closer look, but it only wakes up the bloodthirsty beast. Bob realizes that the bear is drawn to its cocaine and flings across some more for the creature to buy some more time for the others. However, his heroics are quickly interrupted by a shot from Sid. It turns out that the drug lord himself came to the scene because of the delay, and his extreme greed only makes matters worse. Back with Sari and Henry, they discover a trail of paint that was left behind by Dee Dee and find her hiding in a cave. The bear cubs are also present 
in this cave and even the cubs have had a taste of cocaine but they are still harmless. After the happy reunion, all three try to escape but they are spotted by Sid, Eddie and David. The drug lord wants to shoot them dead to avoid any evidence but his greater focus is on the bag full of cocaine. Unfortunately for him, the cocaine has also attracted the attention of the bear cubs. Eddie pleads with his father to let go of the cocaine haul but Sid is simply too greedy to listen. But the entire episode buys Sari, Dee Dee and Henry enough time to jump into the water and wash away to safety. Meanwhile, Sid has a violent fate awaiting him. The cocaine bear arrives and she is furious to see cubs threatened. Sid earns a brief victory by shooting the vicious creature a couple of times but a strong whiff of cocaine is enough to miraculously rejuvenate her. The drug lord is then thrown from the cliff and falls to his death and David escapes with some injuries after Sari treats his wounds. The movie also has a couple of post-credit scenes which indicate the possibility of sequels. One of the post-credit scenes shows one of the young teenagers who got away from the bear with a bag of cocaine, hitchhiking to New York. The second post-credits scene gives you a glimpse into the life of Eddie, who is handed the custody of Bob's dog during his dying moments. The cocaine bear and her cubs are alive and kicking and sure enough, those who dare to venture into her territory will witness some more of her frenzied violence. What makes the cocaine bear such a lethal threat? One of the first things that you have to realize here is just how dangerous a bear is even without ingesting cocaine. The animal in question here is a female black bear with cubs and these are regarded as one of the most dangerous animals in the wild. They are extremely unpredictable and violent and can do just about anything for the safekeeping of the cubs. Now, just add a massive amount of cocaine to the equation and you can imagine how things can quickly get out of hand. Almost every scene featuring the bear portrayed the creature in crazy fits of animalistic rage, which is probably fueled by the consumption of the cocaine. She is driven by the urge to consume more cocaine and anyone in her vicinity faces her wrath. The bear attacks anyone who is out there and some of this aggression might also be because of her concern regarding her cubs. The ferocious beast rips off limbs, dismembers people and pulls out their guts. Such extreme form of gore and violence is obviously cocaine induced but there seems to be an element of revenge in its attacks. From a philosophical standpoint, it can be seen as the bear lashing out at those who affected her normal life. The regular life of the bear in the wild was interrupted due to human intervention which came in the form of the drug drop and now it is just a big game of revenge. It is probably from this standpoint that the makers did not kill the creature off at the end of the movie. Why did the cocaine bear and her cubs not kill Dee Dee? Dee Dee gets off easy when faced with a cocaine bear and all the other characters who encountered the bear head on did not enjoy such luck. The little girl was attacked by the bear initially but she was able to escape relatively unhurt and even left a trail which was picked up by her mother. Was it too difficult for the bear to chase her down and finish her off? We believe Dee Dee might have survived because the cocaine bear is mostly focused on those related to the cocaine in any manner. Besides Besides, it also needs to be considered that Dee Dee was a child and the bear had cubs. Thus, after the initial attack, the motherly instincts of the creature may have been triggered. Later on, even the cubs of Cocaine Bear do not harm the child and it was probably symbolic of the violent animals respecting true innocence. Can the cocaine bear be killed? Well, cocaine never made anyone immortal, so it would be a far stretch to think that the cocaine bear developed any such superpowers. However, it did survive being shot a couple of times by Sid and this probably has something to do with the large amounts of cocaine consumed by the animal. Its adrenaline levels were probably far too high and the whiff of cocaine almost revitalized the vicious creature. The skin of a black bear in general is vulnerable to bullets, but the high adrenaline might have allowed allowed it to survive the wound. It would probably require some heavy fire concentrated on the bear or some form of explosive to kill the creature for good. Besides, there might be some severe effects on the bear's health after the effects of cocaine wear off and that might be deadly enough to get her killed. The real life cocaine bear in the 80s did not survive the heavy dose of cocaine. It was found dead after three months and almost 40 empty containers of cocaine were found around the carcass. We never got to know how the animal reacted after ingesting such a heavy volume of drugs but it clearly died from the impact.
it. Will we see more of the cocaine bear? The way the movie ends offers plenty of room for a sequel. The bear and the cubs seem to be fine and still at large, and their addiction might have further consequences for humanity. Sid made it very clear that his Colombian bosses would come after him if the cocaine was not collected, and the sequel might see another attempt to retrieve the cocaine being met with a vicious bear and her cubs. In fact, if you consider the possibility of the cubs growing up to be cocaine bears, then things might just take an interesting turn. The initial response to Cocaine Bear has been quite overwhelming, and the makers might just consider a sequel given how they clearly left enough scope for that. Something makes us think that a mere kill count of eight will not be the end of the Cocaine Bear. Marvelous Verdict, a fun and outrageous thriller in the 80s B-movie style. The movie never pretends to be a classic, so you might go in expecting exactly what the title suggests, a bear on cocaine going crazy in the forest. However, the elements of the story are still smart enough to hold things together, unlike all the ripped guts and severed limbs by the cocaine bear. The movie is scary, funny and gory at the same time, and you will either be at the edge of your seats or laughing your ass off. It vaguely explores the theme of man versus wild without being too preachy. Enjoy this entertaining ride and watch the violence unleashed by a bear on drugs. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the cocaine bear and tell us what you think happened to the bear in the movie. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.